Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about Kick Patowski from start to finish. Now before we start, you should know that this video might contain some spoilers. Let's get to know the cast, shall we? Clarence Francis Kick Patowski, a 10-year-old amateur thrill-seeking and often reckless daredevil. His main goal in life is to embrace each day as if it were his own personal action movie. He is rather short and wears a signature daredevil outfit, a white jumpsuit with red stripes down each of the sleeves, a white helmet with a red stripe, and yellow boots and gloves. Some of his more notable catchphrases are, It's showtime. Showtime. Fail? I don't do fail. Fail? I don't do fail. Ah, biscuits. Ah, biscuits. And chimichanga. Chimichanga! He is the middle child in his family. His middle name was announced in the rank of awesome as a reference to his original name, Francis Little. He's picked on by his older brother, Brad Batowski, who often refers to him as Dillweed. He has three arch rivals in Kendall Perkins, Ronaldo, and Gordy Gibble. Gunther Magnuson is Kick's 10-year-old best friend and stunt coordinator who is chunky, skeptical, worries a lot. It is also known that Gunther can whistle very well. Gunther, unlike Kick, does not enjoy enjoy living on the edge and can drink a very large amount of cheetah chug without getting sick. He has Viking heritage and his family owns a very successful restaurant. His Viking side shows when Gunther gets serious or angry, by which anyone, well, except Kick, can be intimidated. Bradley Brad Batowski. This is Kick's 17-year-old elder brother. He bullies and insults Kick and Gunther and is in charge when their parents are away. Brad also has very poor personal hygiene and thinks he's popular. His favorite phrase is dillweed, which he uses to refer to kick, and yeah Brad, which is his main catchphrase. He's a self-proclaimed ladies man and will try to date women, but he usually fails. He's very good at manipulating people, especially his parents, to get out or get people in trouble, but that also can backfire at times. Now let's look at some of the background characters. Brianna Batowski. This is Kick's spoiled seven-year-old younger sister. She's mainly known for being a pageant girl. Being the youngest, she usually gets her way by saying, I want. When not participating in pageants, she likes to annoy her brother Kick, holding on to anything valuable to him, like his favorite cereal and tricycle. However, unlike their eldest brother Brad, she seems to have mutual respect for Kick and is very good at working together when on terms. She may have a disliking to Brad. Her favorite show is Tina Sometimes, which is why she always dresses like her. Honey Batowski is Kick's mother. She's infrequently at home, as she and her husband take their daughter Brianna to compete in beauty pageants. She is very caring and protective of Kick, but although she's often worried about him, she acknowledges his daredevil nature, sometimes even helping him with his stunts. In Kickin' Jeans, it's revealed that she was once a famous daredevil and speedboat racer called Honey Splash. She gave up that life as a daredevil, implementing she was pregnant. It's also shown that she was the one who gave Kick his trademark white jumpsuit as a present, just to show him how much she supports him. Her home-baked cookies are very tasty, to the point that it will drive anyone crazily obsessed to want more, even Kick and herself. Harold Batowski is Kick's overcautious and neurotic father. He's usually cheery and easygoing, but is also very anal about possible sources of danger. He also has an unhealthy love for his 1979 AMC Pacer Wagon, calling it Monique, and his wife does the same by calling her car Antonio. He's very obsessed with his wife's homemade cookies, to the point that he'll harm or bribe anyone that gets in his way. He was, as shown in Bad Table Manners, a master at ping pong when he was growing up. Secret Spy Batowski is Kick's grandfather. He was a spy who spied on a military general to beat and stop his evil plan in truth or Daredevil. Wade is a gas station worker who is friends with Kick. In Stumped, Wade supplies Kick with a cheetah chug in hopes of finding a key. The key was a free ticket for Kick to see his favorite monster truck star, Billy Stumps. He is very calm and commonly clumsy, and he'll forget what he was previously doing. Magnus and Helga Munson are Gunther's parents, and a restaurant called Battle Snacks. They're Vikings, lived in the Nordic country, and have shown to have a deep friendship with the Patowski family. Principal Henry is the principal of Mellowbrook Elementary School, and he loathes doing paperwork. It is actually unknown how much he actually hates paperwork, but he isn't entirely bothered by Kick's antics as long as he graduates. 
This is made apparent in Frame Story. He's voiced by the legendary actor Henry Winkler, who learned the principal's lines by remembering his time when he was in the principal's office during his childhood. Kendall Perkins is Kix and Gunther's classmate, one of Kix's arch rivals, and as revealed in Kick or Treat, one of Kix's next door neighbors. She loves learning and she is the president of her class. However, she is also apparently very bossy and high strung and is shown to have very few friends. She and Kick both claim to hate each other, although at times they seem to show a romantic liking for each other. She has shown on separate occasions that she may have a crush on Kick, such as being flattered by Kick's kiss in Box Office Blitz. In Power Play, she loosens a peg for his sandbag so when Ronaldo gets hit, Kick would have to play the part of Romeo in the play. Additionally, she refers to Kick as Clarence, which is his first name, and she is now Kick's girlfriend. Wacky Jackie Wackerman. She's a funny and hyperactive new resident of Mellowbrook. She became obsessed with Kick in her debut appearance in Obsession for Kick, later stalking him due to her being his number one fan, as well as being the president of his fan club. Mouth is Kick and Gunther's frenemy, as well as their classmate whose real name is Christopher. He is the son of the second assistant security guard at Willowbrook Mall, and is also Pansy's younger brother. He schemes a lot, and he loves playing shuffleboard. It's shown in Detained that he can get a hold of anything. He he idolizes Rock Callahan along with Kick and Gunther. Coach Sternbeck is Kick's trainer in Gym Daddy. Charlotte Ciccarelli is one of Kick's next door neighbors who always tattles on Kick and the other kids on the cul de sac for causing any kind of disruption. Ronaldo is in Kick and Gunther's class and another of Kick's arch rivals, whose first appearance is in Mellow Brook Drift, a physics obsessed bully who cheats in the Tri County Cartacular by following the laws of physics. His jacket is somewhat similar to Kick's jumpsuit, only with opposite colors, maroon with yellow stripes down each sleeve, and a small cape in the back. He hangs around a small posse of other nerds, and he goes to Kick's school. Cousin Kyle is Kick Batowski's cousin, who is a little bit of a chatterbox and is also extremely dim-witted. In Kyle Be Back, he gets in Kick's way from doing a record-breaking stunt. In Kyle 2.0, it's shown that he can create radio static just by being near it. However, it is shown that Kyle is also a huge fan of Kick. Boom! Boom Condor is one of the best stunt legends in the world. He had his first contest where Kick and Brad won in Things That Make You Go Boom. He usually has a catchphrase, which is similar to a bird call. Papercut Peterson is a professional wrestler who helped Kick defeat Brad in Dropkick. He used to go by Pile Driver Peterson. He also won the Battle of the Bands by Auto-Tune. He appears in many episodes, although never displayed as a wrestler, but as an unhygienic lonely man. He also humorously often refers to Gunther as being a little girl. He has a look-alike in the old country where Gunther and his family are from, and his relation to his look-alike is unknown. Gordy Gibble is Kick's archenemy whose real name is Gordon, a former BMX legend who broke records after Kick won the BMX rodeo. After his loss, he went into kart racing and other sports. He's from West Mellowbrook, he has a rich father as made apparent in Cart to Cart, and he's also voiced by Will Forte. The Deposi twins first appeared on Close Call and again along with Gordon on Switching Gears. Their names are Michael Anthony and Anthony Michael. They look identical but one has different eyes and the other has a different voice. However, they're both voiced by Sandro Corsaro, which is the show's creator. Kick tries to show everyone that he can beat Dead Man's drop ramp and he failed the first time, so when he tries to redo the stunt, the only barrier that's in his way is his older brother Brad, who wants to keep him inside the house so he could take another drive test. Kick finally leaves the house and makes it to the cliff. His brother was right after him, but Kick did the stunt successfully, and Brad became a laughingstock at the end. Kick misses Billy Stump's show, his favorite daredevil, at the local mall, and he gets a chance to ride shotgun with Billy at the next show by finding the key with the help of Gunther and Wade, owners of the local Food and Fix. They get the key, but the kids can't go to the arena because they don't have a ride. Wade suddenly pulled over, but his car broke down, but then Gunther drank an energy beverage and took Kick to the arena. Kick got into Billy's truck and made a mess that surprisingly impressed Bill. Kick received Billy's signed book, but when he bumped into Gunther who was also holding a book, the books were switched. 
kick followed, but he already dropped it in the return bin. And since the library lady is evil and wouldn't let them get the book back, they tried to sneak into the library. The evil library lady chases him all over the library, but in the end, Kick gets his book. With their parents out of town, Brad throws a party at their house, which Kick, of course, is not allowed to attend. This doesn't stop Kick and Gunther from trying to get into the party to score some of Senior Brad's famous nachos. Kick likes the idea, but Brad doesn't want him at his party. At the party, the invitees are bored and are starting to leave. To keep them entertained, Brad embarrasses himself, but Kick ruins the party by jumping into the nacho bath. His video is all over the internet, and the party suddenly becomes successful because more people join in. Kick performs another dangerous stunt and falls off a cliff, while Gunther, finding and creating an awesome hangout, which Brad and his friends kick them out of, which has Kick and Gunther repeatedly trying to retake it from them. Kick attacks his brother using Gunther. Gunther's Ligonberry fart, but the brothers don't give easily either. However, Kick was ready. The friends took Gunther as hostage and wanted to leave, but Brad doesn't want to, and then they all have a big swap fight. Gunther is injured and Kick is surrounded, but he calls the Vikings and they get their hangout back. Facing the risk of being sent to military school, Kick sets out to prove to his concerned parents and the neighborhood that he can refrain from performing any stunts for an entire day. Despite Brad and the neighborhood, wanting to ensure Kick will succumb to the temptation, and Kick going crazy over not doing stunts, electrifies himself for self-control. He then asks Wade for help, and his tricks seem to help. Brad tempts Kick with the Colonel's tank, and he managed not to drive it. The Colonel took Brad instead because he stole his tank. Tired of being called Shrimp, Kick declares that he will do something big. When given his chance, the resulting disaster deals Kick another chance by being the best shrimp ever. So a rich man promises Kick to be big and not to be looked down upon. He signs a contract to do stunts, but when he's ready to, the rich man makes him wear a shrimp costume and everyone thinks he gets mad and almost leaves, but is reminded of the contract. Kick then decides to give them the biggest show ever and skates using a huge dinosaur made out of cars. But, of course, it gets out of control and starts destroying things. Everyone is running away and Kick decides to fix the mess. He takes the key and turns it off and the crowd cheers. Kick tries to help Gunther's family get business at their restaurant because, if he doesn't, Gunther and his family might have to move back to the old country. He helps them put back the business by creating the most awesome restaurant in Mellowbrook the Battle Snacks. So they decorate the place in a Vikings theme to demonstrate their heritage, expected a grand opening, but it was disappointing. They then entertained the customers doing a fight show, however, they actually scared them off instead. They started to say their goodbyes, but Kick never gave up, so he started collecting the crowd in his way, and people loved the food, and Kick saved his friend's parents' restaurant. A new girl in the neighborhood named Jackie Wackerman sees Kick performing a stunt and he immediately claims to be his number one fan. Gunther tries to warn Kick that Jackie is crazy, but Kick doesn't believe him. A while later, she starts to disturb his stunts, and Kick finally sees that Jackie is crazy. Gunther takes Kick into Jackie's bedroom to show him how obsessed she is, and then disses her. So he starts to question if Gunther is his fan. Gunther gets mad and he leaves, saying he is Kick's friend. Kick then apologizes and pretends to care about safety to get rid of her and it works. Or does it really? Kick and Gunther seek a legendary giant goldfish, which Kick plans to harness for the ultimate waveboarding experience with the help of their neighbor, Mr. Vickle. And while doing so, a storm hits and Gunther gets in danger. The fish suddenly bit the boat and is detected on the radar and it jumps and takes the fish food. They caught her with the line and and Kick followed it while surfing. The fish came after him, but the captain saved them. However, the boat ran out of fuel. She kicked him off the boat, and Kick fell into the ocean. Turns out the fish was the captain's. Kick and Gunther, with the help of Wade, set out to rescue students stranded on a school bus in a snowstorm, while Kendall, the class president, tries to take control over the situation. Kick decides to save them anyway, so he gets Wade's help. Meanwhile, the kids were trying to survive on their lunch and are losing in the bus. Wade shows up from nowhere, helps them build a wagon, and saves everyone. 
By the time they did, the school day was done and it was officially the best snow day ever. Kick adopts an escaped chimp, which he names Dr. Awesome, but has to keep it a secret due to his bad track record of keeping pets. Trouble soon erupts when the zoo's other chimps escape, presumably in search of Dr. Awesome, their leader, and cause mania throughout the cul-de-sac. The monkeys are terrorizing the city, so Kick and Gunther then take the banana cart and start to draw the monkeys in and lead them back to the zoo. Kick's dad wants him to play the piano, but he wants to play outside, and he tries to leave by all means, especially after seeing all the distractions outside. So he decides to do stunts with the piano because, well, basically, his dad told him not to leave it, and he learned how to play it in the process and thought the piano was awesome. Brianna steals Kick's beloved first stunt bike, which she ultimately uses to compete in a pageant party to beat her pageant rival, Penelope Patterson. Penelope Patterson, Kick tried by all means to get his bike back, but was kicked out of the place. Brianna decides to quit, thinking she can't win. However, Kick helped her, and she pulled a great stunt that won the audience's heart. Kick let go of the Trike X5 and gave it to Brianna. Kick and Gunther go to see a movie featuring his favorite Daredevil movie star. However, Pansy, the assistant manager of the multiplex, bans Kick from entering. He's extremely strict and even kicked out his brother, but Kick won't rest until he sneaks into the heavily guarded theater. He ends up kissing his nemesis Penelope to hide, the cinema turns into a mess, but they do manage to see the movie at last. Tired of being bullied by Brad, Kick decides to train with a former champion wrestler. But when he learns that his new mentor, Papercut Peterson, has bullying issues of his own, Kick must prove to his new teacher that every underdog has their day. Kick and Brad are watching their dad's car Monique, and while they're having their usual fight, Brad falls and scratches the passenger side door, which Brad immediately tries to blame on Kick when suddenly he got bitten by bees and his tongue swelled so they go to the hospital. Now, rather than be grounded, Kick decides to fix it himself, but makes matters worse, so Gunther must keep Brad and Kick's dad for a longer time. Wade fixes the car brand new, and Kick puts the car back on the front yard. In the end, it turned out the scratch was already there. It's oral report day in Kick's class. He chooses one of his heroes, Dead Man Dave, as the subject of his presentation. He tells the tale of seeking Dave's lost skateboard in a cave full of traps along with Gunther. But his story is met with disbelief from his classmates, as well as the teacher. The two get the keys to Dave's hideout after fighting rats and get his skateboard as well as passing. When Gunther discovers he has a lot in common with Wacky Jackie, he's bitten by the love bug. But Jackie doesn't even recognize his existence. Kick must help Gunther get the girl by teaching him to do stunts, and he also gets her out of his hair, a win-win situation. Gunther then does a dangerous stunt, and Wacky Jackie finally acknowledges him and ditches Daredevil. It's Father's Day at school, and Kick doesn't want to bring him, as he fears his dad would be too lame, thereby earning his son much shame, in the eyes of his peers. He also tries to make his dad learn some stunts to impress his class, but fails miserably. Hence, his last resort is to get his square dad, Wade, to become cooler before Monday. Now everyone's dad is presenting themselves, and Kick's dad feels disappointed, seeing that he was replaced. Kick gets exposed for his lies, and his real dad pulls a stunt that ruins the whole canteen. But it does win over the kids' hearts. Kick is doing his stunts as usual, but this time loses his helmet, and shocked by the loss of his sign, he decides to quit becoming a daredevil because he can't be one without it. He's now depressed, and Gunther gets him to meet Billy to change his mind, and of course it works. In the end, they they accidentally find the helmet. When Wade is promoted in the Food and Fix and has moved out from the store in the company, Kick and Gunther try to unpromote Wade so that they can be best buds again. So they sneak into his workplace and try to ruin the boss's conferences, but these attempts to get Wade demoted only get him promoted even more. In the end, Kick ends up asking the boss to demote him, and the boss is reminded of his old days and demotes Wade. In this episode, a new kid is introduced, Ronaldo the Bully, and also the leader of a physics-obsessed street racing crew. Kick challenges them in a winner-takes-all race on Mount Hertzmore, which pits the laws of physics against the laws of awesome. To defeat the competition, Kick and Gunther turn to school woodshop teacher One-Eyed Jackson, a legendary go-kart racer, for help. 
They build a car and race as hard as they can, and in the end, the laws of awesome win. Kick is invited to Wacky Jackie's birthday party in the middle of a stunt, so Kick decides to get rid of her forever, since she wrecked a once-in-a-lifetime stunt. Kick makes a deal with Brad, who promises to help find a gift for Jackie's birthday that would guarantee she leaves him once and for all at the cost of his room. When Kick sees he's the only guest at her party, he feels sorry for her and decides to throw her the most awesome party ever. He forgets about the gift though, and as she opens it, she actually likes it. Until this day, we don't know what the gift actually was. And since she likes him even more than ever, he gets to keep his room. Gunther shows Kick a website where the users rank the most awesome videos. So Kick does a lot of stunts to be in the top position, but his first video fails, so he keeps on trying. Now, Kendall heard about the whole thing, and he has to compete with Kendall for it. He attempts to use cats in his videos like Kendall does to get a good rank, and he succeeded again. Kick and Brad have a sibling rivalry on Mother's Day, so they compete against one another to make a Mother's Day breakfast of eggs, bacon, and orange juice for their mother to satisfy her. Brad always ruins Kick's attempts, but not this time. So they both go through so much trouble to get the ingredients, and Harold also enters the competition as well. Only for for their mom to spend her best Mother's Day with her little girl Brianna. Kick and Gunther search for new best friends when they fear their friendship is ending over their family's huge fight over Kick's stunts. However, both of them fail to find new friends, and then they meet at their hangout and have a huge fight, make up, and decide to fix their family's relationship by reminding them of the old days. Kick tries to hide his report card from his dad long enough to attend a demolition derby because obviously he wouldn't allow him to go, as his grades are not good enough. The only obstacle in his way is Brad, who is bent and determined to have their dad see Kick's report card. They finally go to the show, but Kick didn't get to enjoy it because he was injured. After a change in class units from dodgeball to dance appreciation with Mr. Vickle, due to interference from the school nurse, and narrowly avoiding having to dance with Jackie, Kick now has to dance with his arch nemesis Kendall, or he, along with her, will fail gym class and have to compete against a captive and unhappy Gunther and an angry, scorned Jackie in a dance-off. They don't agree at first, but they share common ground and get in the dance battle with the other couple. The coaches agree not to announce the winners, but to play dodgeball instead. The neighborhood is menaced by old Mrs. Ciccarelli, who is determined to see all troublemakers on the cul-de-sac punished so she can enjoy peace. Kick, Brad, and the other kids must stop her before they get grounded forever. So they attempted to dress like Kick and make her believe she was seeing him everywhere. However, when she complained to his mom, Kick was home. Kick's dog ate my homework excuse is no longer valid and he must complete two months full of homework in one night. When Oscar actually eats his first copy, he must now do two months of homework questions in less than six minutes or he'll fail the class. In the end, he made it to class and the teacher believed that the dog ate his homework. Harold was obsessed with Cowboy Kelly ice cream bars and they wanted to gift him the last box, but the truck that keeps it broke down. Now Kick has to save his dad's birthday and prevent a group of Third Street bandits from getting their hands on the extremely rare and delicious ice cream. They manage to get the box to the party, but the whole box melts down except for one piece. Kick makes another mess, but this time at school. So the principal threatens to expel him if he pulls one more stunt inside the school and is homeschooled by Mr. Ciccarelli. Unfortunately, the school janitor decides to frame Kick for a crime that wasn't his to begin with, and now Kick must clear his name before it's too late. It is revealed in this episode that Kendall and Ronaldo are in a secret, and as shown in the episode and later episodes, possibly strained, relationship with each other. Anyways, the janitor tries to prevent Kick from telling the truth and complains about cleaning up after Kick's mess each time. In the end, everything ends well. Kick meets the daredevil stunt double of Tina Sometimes named Scarlett Rossetti. After making her popular, Brianna's favorite TV show is about to be canceled because Kick convinced the stunt double to be acknowledged and be her own person. And now, fans of Tina Sometimes hate him, so Kick has to find a way to get the show back on or get the stuffing beaten out of him by rabid Tina Sometimes fans. He joins the show in her stead, and they get injured in the end after doing a dangerous stunt together. Rock Callahan's coming to Mellow Brook for a big concert and pyrotechnics display. Kick and Gunther's chance to meet their idol has come. But there's only one problem. 
there's only one ticket left at Wade's store, and it's expensive. Neither one can yield the ticket to the other. So, to pay for the ticket, Kick and Gunther have formed a lawn mowing service, and now Kick and Gunther's friendship is really on the line. Will they reach a compromise, or will their desire to meet Rock Callahan mentally strain their friendship? Well, the two tore the ticket in the end and ended up watching Rock's show with goggles. This episode starts with Brad bullying Kick as usual, so when he stops, it's pretty fishy. Kick finds out when Brad was busy with his new girlfriend, Kelly, that she's just using him for a cheerleader leading initiation stunt, which is throwing a huge pile of junk on Brad live on stage while he's performing a song for her. Can Kick get through to Brad before he is beyond humiliated in front of the entire high school class? Well, he tries to prevent the whole situation, but junk ends up all over the place. The girlfriend is exposed, and Brad gets over her fast. Kick and Gunther discover Kick's mother was a daredevil called Honey Splash when they were looking for artifacts in the basement, so he tries to convince her to do a stunt with him. And when she does, she shines again and becomes the new talk. But Kick felt outshined and less awesome, but then he realizes that he has to support her, and she goes on to break a record. I guess awesome plus awesome really does equal awesome. Kick's mom takes Kick to the mall to buy a suit for his aunt's wedding, and must ensure that the suit his mom picked out is safe and sound. They pick a suit, and he doesn't want to be seen holding it, but the DePazzi twins do anyway and make fun of him. He ends up losing his suit and chasing it all over the mall, but he gets it back. In this episode, a famed attraction at the Gnarly Games comes to Mellowbrook. Kick aims to conquer said attraction and enlists Gunther to help him, who's busy with cleaning. When Kick does a stunt to clean the garage, Gunther's dad's foosball table breaks apart when he leans on it during his victory moment. Now he has to do a string of chores to replace it before his parents notice. They come up with a plan to make Brianna scream so that they get the table for $20 only, and now the loop is leaving, they use the table to do the stunt and it breaks in the end. Kick takes over the delivery at the Battle Snacks, but one day when a mysterious individual known only as the Dark One breaks the rules for getting free meals, Kick finds out that Ronaldo is the Dark One and must beat him the only way a delivery boy knows how. Ronaldo makes the biggest order on the menu, but Kick and Gunther hide Kendall's giant head and make the delivery on time, so Ronaldo has to pay back for his evilness. Kick discovers that his grandfather was a spy when they were cleaning the basement. His grandfather tells him all about it, and it's like the characters got duplicated in the past. The grandpa was to beat the evil Tankstein by getting a package, which was a scientist. Kick's grandpa and the scientist gets caught, but a girl comes to his rescue, and he goes on to save the package as well. The grandpa fights the bad guys and saves the day, and in the end, Kick and his grandpa ride on the bike. In the never-ending saga of Kick making a mess, he accidentally breaks Gunther's Viking clock. He replaces it by spending a day with Jackie because she put himself for rent in the auction. Jackie is somehow creepy, but each time she takes things to a whole new level. This time, she planned their wedding, and now Kick is trying to run away from her. But of course he fails, and in the end, Gunther tells him that he doesn't even care about the clock and that he has many pieces of it. Faceplant, the impossible obstacle course game show, is what Kick is aiming to win for $50,000. The only problem is that 37 failures has given him a less than desirable reputation and now is forced to seek help from Ronaldo in exchange for teaching him how to be awesome for Kendall. So they train and Kick actually wins the show, but the shoemaker prevents him from hitting the button. Kick wins anyway and Kendall thinks Ronaldo is awesome. Kick is torn between two promises to help Gunther and Billy Stumps with their shows at 7 p.m. He's now tasked with a lose-lose situation as to which one of the two events deserves his full attention. Kick keeps skating back and forth between the two shows because, well, it's never the right time to do what he's supposed to do. Kick almost misses Gunther's show, but he does make it in the end and the Vikings like his show and his parents are proud. After Jackie ruins another one of Kick's stunts again, he discovers a contest for Skidzy's Ride Shop. The one with the best picture of speed and action gets to be on a billboard. 
Since Gunther is out one camera, the only one they have knowledge of is in the service and in the hands of Jackie. Now they have to work things out through her obsession. She is so obsessed that she wouldn't give him the best picture they got because she thinks it's rightfully hers as she's his number one fan. The picture got ruined after a chase and Mr. Skidzy chooses Kick's printed picture on Jackie's shirt. Kick and Kendall's hands get stuck together due to a rare cave sap and they must get unstuck without being being seen together because everyone's infamously known for being blabbermouths. They would think they were dating. Now, the two are stuck in an awkward and humiliating situation. In the end, they start to warm up to each other and they unstuck. But then again, Kick is stuck with Ronaldo now. Fed up with Brad's constant bullying, Kick enlists the services of Luigi Vendetta, who promises to take care of Brad once and for all. Luigi is brutal and is trying to seriously harm Brad, which wasn't what Kick exactly wanted. So now Kick is on a mission to save his brother. In the end, Vendetta pulls the most unexpected voice and he is now singing non-stop until Brad promises not to bully Kick anymore. Kick can't wait to take a spin around the track at Go 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 Kart World, but when Gordy Gibble buys the track, he bans the Batowskis from the track, thus firing Brad, who happens to work at the track during this episode, in the process. Now, to get Brad his job back, he must race Gordon Gibble and win. Kick wins in the end and Brad gets his job back. In order to score tickets to Dirt Bike Mike's Demo Cross, Kick must spend time with Cousin Kyle. But there's one problem. One of Kick's ideas backfires on him when Kyle pretends that Kick doesn't exist. When Dodgeball is banned in gym class and is replaced by the fusion of knitting and yoga, Nidoga, Kick tries out for the school's sports team. However, in his quest to become an athlete, he causes some chaos when he has trouble following coach Sternbeck's rules, but he finally sticks with dodgeball. After one too many of the principal's sandwiches is ruined, primarily from Kick's antics, he calls Miss Ciccarelli out of retirement and she becomes the new vice principal. She immediately serves Kick and his friends with detention. Kick must team up with some unlikely allies, including Ronaldo and Kendall, to bring her down and escape detention. Kick is accused of stealing school property, so he switches CDs and the principal discovers it was Mr. Ciccarelli feeding his sandwich to her dog, so he fires her. Kick is trying to get to Skidzies without touching the floor, but he fails multiple times and soon discovers he is a main target for his brother's internet show, You've Been Bratted. Kick's life is being ruined, but he's not letting it slide. He makes an amazing stunt despite his brother's cheap tricks and makes his brother let go of his internet show. Brianna and her friends want to watch the Tina Sometimes Marathon, but meanwhile, Perseus in Pittsburgh is also on TV, and Kick and Gunther will do anything not to miss that movie since it stars their idol Rock. Callahan. No matter how hard they try to move the girls from the TV, they fail. In the end, Brianna was nice enough to record the movie for them because they slept right when it started. Kick and Gunther are going to Kendall's party, but Kick is bored and he's challenged Kendall to trick or treat at a house that no one has ever gone to, the super creepy and haunted Vander Death Mansion. Kick reaches out to all his friends of the party because Kendall got bored everyone, including her boyfriend Ronaldo. The kids go to the mansion, find that the scary things were run by an old woman, and they all get candy in the end. When Brad and his friends abandon Kick and Gunther in the woods, they discover an abandoned amusement park that may be haunted by the ghost of Dead Man Dave. The two kids enjoy their time while Brad is crying at home after seeing pictures with his younger brother. Kick does some stunt with the dead man Dave and Brad goes back to the park to take Kick back home, but he gets scared by dead man Dave and he and his friends storm off. When Kick's room accidentally gets destroyed, he's forced to share a bedroom with Brad. Now, normally that wouldn't be bad, but here's the thing. It was Brad's fault Kick's room was destroyed in the first place. Anyways, Brad is so dirty it made Kick clean the room, and when Brad saw it, he lost his mind and destroyed it, and now he has to share rooms with Brianna while Kick gets his room back. Wade is missing, and it's up to Kick and Gunther to unravel a series of bizarre clues to find out where Wade is and return him to work before a crucial health inspection of the food and fix. After a long time of solving problems, they find Wade in the forest, and he tells them everything that happened to him. Now that they're all back at his store, they clean it before the health inspection worker 
worker comes, and everything works out in the end. Kick tries to help his sister get into the prestigious Poise Posse Club after he had ruined her entry chances at the club's auditions last year and now must earn back Brianna's trust. He got her an escort, who was Kick himself, and during the show, Penelope pulls some cheap tricks, and by the end of the show, the stage was wrecked, but Brianna won. Kick must research a strange creature called a Nuzzlet given to him to make a school report. But here's the rub. The book he needs and the only place quiet enough for him to do his report are both in the library. Now he has to work around the evil library keeper for their last time, and he can't make any noise or he would be kicked out and eventually fail his report. Now, the thing is that the small creature is evil. In the end, the library gets destroyed just as Ronaldo walks in and the library keeper wakes up and blames him for it. The teacher believes Kick and gives him an A. Kick finds a dog called Jazzy, but but what will he do when he discovers the dog's purpose is to prevent any and all stunts? Kick tries to look for her real owner, but grows attached to her and regrets trying to take her to a shelter. Suddenly, a car goes off the road and the dog protects the old lady and ends up getting adopted. In order to see Rock Callahan's new movie, Kick tags along on Brad's date to make sure it goes well. But there are two problems. His date finds Kick better company than Brad, and Brad has his habit of being an oppressive big brother. The brothers make a deal, but Brad cheats and keeps the card. However, it turns out his date is a big fan of Rock Callahan. The two fight over the ticket, and April sees them. She discovers that Brad isn't the nice big brother he painted himself to be, so she and Kick leave him and go to see the movie. It's Secret Santa time at the Batowskis. Kick gets Kyle as Secret Santa, so he gets him a dirty sock as a puppet, but then when Kick has a change of heart, he goes to great lengths to get Kyle the perfect gift. He takes his funds and goes to the best puppet stores, but everything is sold out except for the dragon puppet. He gets it, but the sleds the cost. Kick somehow loses the gift, but Kyle doesn't even care because Kick is his favorite cousin and gives Kick a sled made out of Brad's bed. The family goes on a trip and Kick causes an avalanche for the fourth time that traps the Batowski family and Kick has to find a way to get them out before they get cabin fever and go crazy. He tries to melt the ice in many different ways, but of course none of them work. In the end, they do make it out, but he becomes everyone's butler. Kick, Brad, and their Father Harold get stuck in a freezing cold attic together with no way out. Well, or is there? They try to escape, they get attacked by raccoons, but they finally leave through the window. Gunther and Kick were playing, and while at it, they destroy Mr. Magnuson's lawn dragons, so now Gunther is grounded on the night of Boom McCondor's BMX joust. Magnus, evidently wanting to give him a sporting chance, challenges Kick to a battle sneakin' to see if he can get Gunther on the sidewalk before sundown. If he doesn't, Gunther's grounding gets extended for a year. If that wasn't bad enough, Magnus has never ever lost a battle sneakin' before. Kick attempts to get Gunther outside of the house, but Mr. Magnus is prepared for the traps. Mrs. Magnus ends the whole thing, the two destroy Harold's flowers, and now Kick is grounded. Kick reluctantly agrees to go on a sleepy river water park ride with Gunther. When Gunther falls asleep, Kick decides to take an unauthorized detour in an attempt to find adventures, but he gets more than he bargained for as he falls into the sewers and and now he has to fight crocodiles, survive in the woods, and falling over a waterfall. Kick must protect Ronaldo from danger until the school play of Romeo and Juliet is over, or he'll have to take his place. Now, normally that wouldn't be so bad, but the, uh, the Juliet of the play is Kendall. He even goes as far as to get bullied by kindergartners and the Deposi twins because Ronaldo takes advantage of the situation. Ronaldo collapses during the play anyway, and Kick has to take his role, but he collapses collapses as well, and Gunther saves the show. It is time for the State Regional Spelling Bee. But thanks to a lunch-themed horror from Principal Henry, the only person who's well enough to partake in the bee is Kick, who, let's face it, is a terrible speller. So Kick and Principal Henry make a deal. If Kick wins the competition, the canteen will serve pizza two days a week. 
They train and train, but it just looks like Kick is hopeless until they train while doing stunts. Kick wins the competition, and Principal Henry is proud of him. Kick is caught littering by Officer Irwin and is assigned highway cleanup duty. But a pesky rival, who is so eager to keep his side of the road cleaner, makes Kick's job harder. Can Kick, with Gunther's help, bring this rival to justice, or will he be buried by the one thing he's supposed to get rid of? Anyway, Kick plans to expose his rival in front of Officer Irwin for littering, they get him arrested, and Kick wins a trophy that he gave to the officers and loses the money with it. Kick, while in the midst of his paraboarding ambitions, is strapped for a material that can withstand the G-forces when he's airborne, but is denied such a thing when he tries to borrow such a thing from his neighbors. But when a thief surfaces in the neighborhood, a sleep-deprived Kick is accused of stealing the items. So to clear his name, he forms a neighborhood watch with Gunther. He eventually comes up with no leads and now has one night to turn up a perp or the neighbors will be calling the boys in blue. In the midst of his last ditch effort, even Kick would be surprised as to the thief's identity. Turns out, the whole neighborhood is the thief and have been stealing each other's clothes. Gordy tries to impress his father, Mr. Gibble, by threatening to destroy Kick and Gunther's favorite hangout to build a toolbar, the gully. The only way for them to save it is by outsmarting him. However, they couldn't and they lost their hangout and every other hangout because Gordy keeps taking them over. The two still fight Gordy and he ends up recklessly destroying the bridge they built. His father dismisses him from his duty and the boys finally get their place back. Dad's beloved car Monique is towed away, so Kick and Dad have to work together to get it back. But since getting it back is expensive, they're challenged to a Coliseum crash show by the car dumpster workers and if they win, Dad gets to keep Monique. If they don't, they destroy the car. They agree and Dad is on his nerves because the car is in danger and Kick is more pressured to save his dad's beloved car. In the end, they beat the car dumpster workers and take Monique back home. The Batowskis got a new TV and Brad and Brianna are the first to make claims on it. Harold makes them play ping pong to decide who gets control over the TV for the night, which was the way the Batowski family used to settle things when Harold was younger rather than fighting. Brad and Brianna both have bad table manners with ping pong, but things start to get out of hand when Harold picks up a paddle. Now the only only one who can stop him is Kick. Their game lasts a long time, they cause a mess, and they almost destroy the house all because of it. Kick beats the father, but the TV is already broken. Kick, Harold, and Brad continue their annual tradition of telling scary stories during a campout, but this year, Kick's story is so scary that the boys begin to fear that it's come true. The boys imagine things and finally decide to go back inside the house. I guess Kick is just that good at telling scary stories stories. After Brad takes all his savings, Kick violates a newly founded brotherly bond agreement when he decides to get back at his brother by stealing his diary. But being as reckless as he is, Kick loses it and is freaking out because he has to return it before Brad gets home and finds out it's lost. After a long chase, he returns it home and their father rips their brotherly law. When Kick's grandma Rosie comes to visit, they have a blast together until she gives Kick a new jumpsuit for his stunt. Kick finds himself torn between making his grandma happy by wearing the embarrassing outfit or risking hurting her. In the end, he decides to wear the birdie outfit and do the stunts, all while getting ridiculed by the neighbors. His grandma is so proud of him. Kick and Gunther become sidekicks to mouth after they seek his help to watch a live TV broadcast of Jock Wilder's Croc Wrestle 2. He tricks them into breaking into the mall to watch the show, but in fact, he just wanted them to steal a ring. The two refuse, so Mouth frames them and they get arrested. Turns out it was Kendall who paid Mouth to do so. Kick can't get a wink of sleep when Wacky Jackie and Cousin Kyle compete over who's his number one fan and throw him a celebration in honor of his latest stunt. They even got his favorite daredevils. Can you imagine how hard it would be to book two superstars at the same time? Anyways, Kick goes to sleep and Gunther gets stuck in the number one fan mess. Honey entrusts Kick with keeping a batch of her homemade cookies away from Harold. 
kick is sure it would be easy, but the obsessed Harold will stop at nothing to get his hands on those cookies, exhibiting kick-style determination. Harold chases kick to get the cookies and pretends that he's honey to try to trick kick into giving him the cookies. Kick ends up eating the cookies, and now he's the one obsessed with them. Kick and Brianna break dad's air conditioner on the hottest day of the year, but Brad is blamed and grounded for the whole summer. Kick and Brianna agree to keep their blunder a secret, but Kick struggles with the mounting guilt, so he decides to tell his dad, but Brianna tries to stop him because she would be grounded if he revealed what happened. When the HVAC technician came to fix the air conditioner, Kick broke down and confessed, and now he's spending the summer as their butler. But uh, what about Brianna? Well, she didn't get grounded, but she'll surely have her karma in camp without her suitcase. Kick needs money to buy an awesome bike engine and convinces Brianna to let him borrow the money. When he can't pay it back in time, Brianna, with the help of her friends Madison and Abby, becomes a loan shark and pushes her brother to make good on his promise. He tries to gain money, but he utterly fails, so his last resort to satisfy Brianna is to wear a unicorn outfit and do a skating show, which she enjoys. When Kendall inadvertently outdoes Kick at a motocross stunt and claims to be Mellow Brooks' top daredevil, she's challenged to a rematch by Kick. Kendall agrees to only participate in an all-girl roller derby, so Kick and his friends must put on disguises in order to compete. During the race, their identities get exposed, and both of them fail. In order to attend the gnarly games, Kick must track down cousin Kyle, who has just consumed an entire case of Cheetah Chug. However, catching his energized cousin is easier said than done. Kick tries everything, but nothing works, so his last resort is to lure Kyle using a puppet that looks like him and he finally captures him. After sneaking out of the house to see the new Rock Callahan movie, Kick arrives home to find that his dad has installed a new security system and must dismantle this extreme robot before his dad wakes up. After some chaos, Kick breaks the robot, his dad gets mad and pulls an even bigger robot out to teach Kick a lesson. Rock portrays Kick in an action movie. In the movie, Rock as Kick must defeat the evil villain, the Dark One, who threatens to take over Mellowbrook. Now, you might wonder what happened to kick in the end, but the season finale has become the series finale due to the cancellation of the series. Unexpectedly so, leaving Kick's plot unresolved. But I would like to believe that Kick became a big daredevil and maybe got together with Kendall because she had a crush on him. But honestly, who knows? Guys, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in another video.